Rendezvous with Beryl by Admiral Frodo March Chapter 1 It was by far the worst day of his career, thought Lieutenant Dorald. Not only had his commander nearly removed him from the active roster for being late to the briefing for the mission, he was grounded for the next week. Such a harsh punishment for very little was what the Gamma Squadron flight member was receiving. He couldn't even leave the hangar of the Sovereign for the next week. The pilot shrugged as he gripped the pillow on the small bed that was standard in all Imperial brigs. Brig, you ask? Why yes, yes of course. Lieutenant Dorald was stuck in the brig of the Sovereign Super Star Destroyer Sovereign. He thought he was on a routine mission with Gamma Squadron, but it turned out to be much more. Mission 1 Ruined Routine Lieutenant Dorald rushed to the briefing room at full speed and entered it panting. His commander was there looking at him. The briefing had of course started and the commander wasn't pleased at all. Nice of you to show up, Lieutenant. I thought you'd never come, he said strictly. Well, sir, you see, um, um, well, I was, um, Dorald started, but it was too late for his commander had already cut him off. I don't want to hear it this time. Since you were late for the briefing and you missed the whole thing, except the last frame, I'm going to have to explain the whole mission to you again. He said with a bit of not so well hidden anger. Doral stood at attention and awaited the instructions. The mission is coming straight from the top. We have some secret mission objectives which you won't know about until I tell you in a mission. For now it's simply an inspection mission. Inspect everything that comes through between the navigation buoys. The usual mess, lieutenant. Except if I tell you to do something, you will do it. Now get. His commander finished and Dorot was on his way to his tie interceptor. He had inspected three corvettes, four transports and a single shuttle. All imperial, nothing to be seen. When suddenly a small rebel strike cruiser hypered in at full speed next to the modified frigate enforcer that Gamma Squadron was temporarily working with for this mission only. Gamma Flight 3 had the gunboats and quickly began attacking the strike cruiser. Meanwhile the modified frigate was within range of the strike cruiser, therefore they were gunning at each other without any remorse. Then Dorot saw it. It was a shuttle coming out of the hangar of the strike cruiser. His commander had lost his communication system early in the combat, therefore was unable to tell him anything as to if that shuttle was the bonus goal. The shuttle had a red IFF but Doral didn't believe for a second that it could have been Imperial since it was coming out of a rebel strike cruiser. Doral shot at it, fired again and again until it exploded to a million pieces. Once it exploded, all he could hear was a very big no coming through the communication system as his commander had fixed his unit. The strike cruiser was now destroyed. Its squadron of A-wings done for, and he was in very, very big trouble. Chapter 2 Lieutenant Dorot was still in the brig and was still a lieutenant for the moment. He had no idea what was going to happen to him and he was waiting patiently. He knew the HCI had been disbanded, therefore they couldn't possibly send for them. He was happy about this fact since the HCI had very little pity for any single lieutenant. A few troopers came to his cell, opened the door and only one simple word. Come. And he did so. He followed them up to the Sovereign's main briefing room. He didn't know what was going to be done of him. Suddenly the troopers halted and the door opened. He walked inside the room and was met by the gaze of Grand Admiral Estatin himself, who was sitting at the table along with another few highly decorated officers. He came to attention at the door and immediately saluted and said, Lieutenant Kevin J. Dorald, reporting as ordered, sir. Thankfully, it wasn't the wrong thing to say. It was the only thing he had in mind and it seemed to have a bit of integrity stuck to it. 
The Grand Admiral studied him for a moment before answering. Long, painful moment. His eyes felt like daggers as they looked at the young lieutenant who was sure that his career with the Thai Corps had ended and that he would be executed. Sit, lieutenant, was all the Grand Admiral said to him. He obeyed promptly and sat where he was pointed to with a slick gesture of Estatin's hand. Thorold took a moment to study the admirals that were sitting at the table. The briefing room had turned into a courthouse, or at least it seemed to be. The table in front of him seemed to be a panel of judges. Behind him was an audience, and to his right, where the jury should have been, there were simply a few empty seats and the briefing screen. To the fleet commander's right, he could see the security officer, Admiral Vladet Xavier. To his left, he noticed the flight officer, High Admiral Sirk, and next to him was his command attaché, Fleet Admiral Kamir Sarin. Next to Vladet was a short officer with what seemed to be a bright green uniform belt. It was the tactical officer of the Emperor's Hammer. Thorold couldn't remember the name exactly, but he was scared of this one in particular for some odd, undetected reason. Perhaps it was because of his custom-made uniform, which had the faintest hint that he used to be in Praetorian Elite Squadron. Perhaps it was because, unlike the other admirals at the table, he actually looked at Thorold with a look of worry and seeming pity. Behind Thorold was the audience, the spectators, among them, he could recognize his Commodore Vice Admiral Steele, his Wing Commander and his Commander all looking glum as ever, for they were about to lose another pilot. Admiral Xavier stood up and started speaking. We are here today for the court hearing of Lieutenant Orold, accused of Article 412 being a traitor. Article 407 Friendly Fire and Article 404 Conduct Unbecoming of an Officer and a Gentleman, he said. He allowed a moment for the young pilot to swallow what he just heard, since it was indeed three of the worst articles he could have ever had against him. Thorold couldn't believe that his single act of initiative led to this very atrocious extent. Blooded continued, as we all know, Yesterday a member of the intelligence division was returning to the Emperor's Hammer via the transport of strike cruiser Oblivion, a rebel strike cruiser. The intelligence division arranged that the pilot in question would have been pretending to be rebel in origin and he was to be intercepted at those coordinates. The intelligence division also changed the heading of the strike cruiser to arrive at those coordinates where Gamma Squadron and the modified frigate Enforcer would meet it and escort the agent to its hangar thanks to the shuttle that the intelligence division provided him access. However, when he exited the hangar of the strike cruiser with the shuttle, he was met by the fire of Gamma 3, piloted by Lieutenant Orald, and he was killed. This is the result of my investigation. The security officer sat back down, and there was a slight moment of silence. The Grand Admiral, without standing up, said simply to the young officer, to these charges and allegations, how do you plead? The phrase came to Dorold harshly, although it was said on a normal tone. Dorold didn't quite know what to answer and simply stood up and said while stuttering, Not guilty, sir. Well, I mean, it wasn't supposed to be that way, sir. The response came with very little transparency as it was quite obvious that the lieutenant was scared out of his space boots and wasn't sure of what was going to happen to him. Did you destroy the shuttle? asked the fleet commander. Yes, sir, that I did. But I thought... The world began with a lot more certainty, but he was cut off. What you thought was irrelevant, lieutenant. It's what you did that matters. It was Admiral Xavier who said it pierced through Darold, who was now fighting the urge to go to his throat and kill the security officer with his bare hand. But as much as that would make him feel better, the outcome of that would be certain death for himself. At the time, he still had a slight chance of not dying. Allow him to explain himself, 
said the Grand Admiral, while casting a sideways glance to his security officer, which was enough to tell him that he was out of line. Blooded said right back down and didn't say another word until the lieutenant was finished explaining. Well, sir, I was under the impression that he was the secret mission objective. I thought we had to destroy the shuttle, Lieutenant Dorold said, allowing a slight pause. How did you come to this conclusion, Lieutenant? said the fleet commander. Well, sir, my commander had told me that he had a secret mission objective for us. But as soon as the rebels entered the system, they knocked out this communication system, which made knowing the objective impossible because he was the one that was going to tell us when or what it was and what to do, he continued. He took a small break to gauge the panel's reaction and they didn't seem impressed. I know it's not an excuse, but I was sure at the time that it was the target. A spur of the moment, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Dorod finished timidly. Well, sorry just won't do it, I'm afraid, said Grand Admiral Estetin. The panel took a moment to confer and then the fleet commander spoke. Admiral Xavier, what is your sentence? He said slyly. On the charge of Article 412, treason, we find the pilot not guilty. On the charge of 404, conduct of unbecoming of an officer and a gentleman, we find the pilot guilty. On the charge of 407, friendly fire resulting in death, we find the pilot guilty, he said. Very well, answered the Grand Admiral. I sentence you to loss of commission, medals, and any other awards. You will be placed in the brig until your appeal tomorrow, he stated. Guards, take Cadet Dorold back to the brig, said Admiral Xavier. Dorold gave one last look towards the panel, a look of pain and sorrow. He regretted the moment he pulled the trigger of his stick with deep remorse. He looked again at the tactical officer in his black uniform and got nothing this time. His sentence was given and he now had no chance. The stormtroopers came to him and brought him back to the brig without saying a word. Chapter 3, Mission 2, Pirated Escape Dorald was in the brig, mad at himself and mad at the universe. He was sure that that was the right target, but yet now he was a cadet again and had no hopes of ever gaining anything ever again in his career, ever. Suddenly, the door to his cell opened. There was an admiral, a woman admiral standing there with a gold star on her chest and multiple medals that Dorald had never seen in his life. She glanced down at the now cadet and looked at him with a smile and said almost perkily, How are you, pilot? Dorot looked at her with all his emotions of sadness and she obviously came to the conclusion about how he was. That bad, huh? Well, if it's any consolation, you're not going to the appeal tomorrow. Huh? How, how can that be possible, ma'am? Dorot said. I am the Supreme Director of the Intelligence Division. I am letting you out of your cell and I suggest you go out into exile. In one week, go to these coordinates, she said as she handed him a datapad. Now get, she added. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm sorry I killed your agent, ma'am, he said. She nodded and pointed to the hallway. He left. Dorold had little trouble not getting recognized as he ran down the halls and to the hangar where his tie interceptor was waiting for him. Gamma 3 was right there where he arrived, and he was still wearing his flight suit since they literally put him in the brig the second he arrived in the hangar. He had left his helmet in the cockpit and slipped it on. He was ready for some more depressurized flight. It was only when he left the hangar of the Sovereign that he realized that he had no hyperdrive. She tricked him. Now he was in even more danger than before. He noticed that Delta Squadron was patrolling in TIE Fighters. They noticed him and began to target him. He glanced at the databed and saw that he hadn't been tricked. She had added a note below the coordinates. The note read, P.S. I know you have no hyperdrive. Just look at those rocks over there. Destroy the container in the R&D's hangar 
as you enter it. They will think that you just ran the asteroid and committed suicide. The plan was iffy, but it would work. He targeted the D-type container and headed to the small asteroid field, 20 kilometers out. Thankfully, his opponents were in shielded TIE fighters and had no chance of catching up to him. Still, he destroyed a few for fun. On his way to the asteroid, he noticed something. It wasn't a simple asteroid field. It was a pirate base. Wave after wave of Z-95s, R-41s and T-wings were headed his direction. He opened the channel and began talking. Pirates helped. I'm exiled from the Emperor's Hammer and I request, he began saying, but he was cut off. We know, Aseret hired us to fake your death. Now get to that damn container, the pirate told him in a scruffy voice. He sped towards the container as the Emperor's Hammer fought the pirates. He took out a pirate or two to make it look like he was helping the Emperor's Hammer and then destroyed the container and entered the hangar. Chapter 4 Dold exited his tie and took off his helmet to find a scruffy looking internal hangar filled with old looking pirate ships. The Imperials are leaving the area, said the intercom system. Dorald pushed a sigh of relief as he climbed down from his fighter only to be met by, yes, more troops. The pirate guards didn't have masks and he saw them grinning widely. They took him straight to another brig. Perfect, this is just perfect, now I'm in a pirate brig. At least the sovereign was cleaner, thought Dorald aloud. Suddenly the brig door opened. Dorald wasn't surprised at all this time since he got used to brick doors opening and closing throughout the last few days. Hello, my name is Fitzip. I'm the leader of this magnificent pirate organization based in this small asteroid cluster. I've been dealing with Lady Aseret for a long time now, and she asked me to help you get into our base and fake your death, the friendly looking man said. Thank you very much, my name is Dorald, said Dorald. Oh no, don't thank me, you see. I agreed. To help fake your death. I didn't agree to let you kill my men, he yelled at Dorald. Oh, uh, well, sorry, uh, I was making it look like I was really on the Emperor's Hammer side, said Dorald. Well, you pretty much ruined it for you. We're going to give you a chance, though. We'll give you execution through real exile, said Fitzip. The guards took Dorald to the hangar and stuffed him into a beaten of TIE Fighter. We got a few of these out of an exchange with Aseret. This one, however, got really damaged. So we're getting you in there and giving you a 15 second head start to escape. Well, you don't even have a half a drive, so... <laughs> it's upset. Mission 3. Execution. The tie was in horrible condition. It had about 50% hull and he had to face squads of pirates with it. At least he'd die a pilot's death. Wave after wave of pirates came. They started with a single Z95, then more and more until they started sending R41s and T-wings. Dorald took them one by one and didn't let down the Gamma Squadron pride his commander worked hard to put into him. He had just taken down an entire squadron and a half of pirates when finally Dorald got some good luck. Out of hyperspace, a modified corvette appeared. It was a scouting craft and it was 10 kilometers away. Corvette Swankster, help! I'm being chased down by pirates. Permission to come aboard? He hailed the corvette. Granted, provided you return the favor, the corvette captain said to him. Of course, anything! Dorald began heading towards the corvette when suddenly TIE Interceptor Gamma 3 came out of the R&D facility. It was piloted by Fitzip himself. Thinking about leaving so soon, Dorald? I'll show you what a real pilot is, Fitzip said. He continued mocking Dorald until Dorald simply shut off the communication system and headed straight towards Fitzip. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. Fitzip clearly ordered his henchmen not to help. He went full speed and with nothing but a slight trick of cutting his throttle to 33% and blowing the TIE Interceptor to bits from the side, Dorald 
was victorious. A flurry of fighters of every kind which flowed out of the R&D facility. Thorold headed towards the corvette at full speed. Okay, Swankster, I'm coming in. Prepare to jump out, he said to them as he entered the hangar. The modified corvette did so immediately and Thorold was safe again. Chapter 5 Hello, mister, said a scientist in a white lab coat to Drolt as he was exiting the TIE fighter in the Corvette's tight hangar bay. Drolt, my name is Drolt. Who might you be? Drolt said to him honestly. No need to lie to these people since they were obviously scientists. My name is Dr. Edgar Frontress. I am a scientist and I work for the scientific community of planet Albond on the Outer Rim. We are the first people from our system to ever arrive to this portion of the galaxy, which seems to be run by some sort of imperial faction called the Emperor's Hammer, the man told the world. Indeed. What do you know about these imperials? asked the world, out of pure curiosity. Well, they seem to have an immense fleet and a lot of power in this particular region. One of the few that have a chance to actually challenging the predominant New Republic, said the doctor. Do you like the New Republic? Dorold asked. Not that much, to be honest with you. They always seem to be over preoccupied with maintaining order in chaos and preventing the Imperial types to take over. However, I am not here for a political point of view. We are here to study the many parts of this galaxy, Edgar answered. I see now. I believe I have a favor to return, the world asked, because being in debt was always better than being in the rig, but he didn't enjoy being in debt. Ah, well, as you can see, we have no fighter escort. We'll fix this fighter should you provide us with escort on our various missions, the doctor asked. I see, I'll gladly help you. Can your technicians add a hyperdrive to the tie? Dorot asked the scientist, keeping in mind his rendezvous with the ID in six days' time. Why do you need one, my friend? The Corvette has one, said the doctor. Oh, but we cannot rely on the dead, doctor. For you see, often you'll need me to stay behind and attack your enemies while you exit hyperspace. It's a very dangerous galaxy, said Dorot honestly. So he would believe him. Yes, I noticed. Well, we'll let it soon, said the doctor. Thank you very much. Don't worry, I'll be good to you. My people have light debts, you know, and I owe you mine, the Lord lied to him. He didn't have anything like a life debt, and he was no Wookiee. I'll show you to your quarters, said the doctor. Mission 4, study defense. The word, Dorold, we need you at the bridge, abruptly awoke Dorold in the middle of his long deserted rest in real quarters. They were cramped, yes, but at least he could open the door at will and the scientists actually respected him. He almost felt too guilty to ditch them in order to get to his rendezvous the next day. Dorold, are you there? The communication system said again. Yes, I'm coming, answered Dorold. He got up and left for the bridge. It was a short walk, being a modified corvette and all. Yes, Dr. Fontress? What can I do for you? asked Dorold. Well, Dorold, we want to study this cruiser which has been struck with various asteroids which caused its crew to escape. However, it seems to have quite a defense around it. Mines. Could you take care of those? The doctor asked him. Of course, I'm on my way answered Dorold. A simple mine sweeping job, nothing hard about it. He'd just get the mines with his newly repaired TIE fighter, which now has shields, but the hyperdrive hasn't been added yet. He got to the hangar and entered the fighter. They even put more stuffing in the seat to add to the comfort. He exited the hangar. There it was, a brilliant minefield with a cruiser in the center that had a few asteroids stuck inside it. It looked magnificent. He began firing at the mines, each in turn exploded with a slight thud and everything was going according to plan. 
Once the mines were dealt with, the modified corvette started heading towards the cruiser for a docking operation. Then it happened. Dorold's past had caught up to him. Various ships of all IFFs appeared in the area and started towards the modified corvette. They were bounty hunters, and they were all after Dorold. Modified corvette Swangster, there is a bounty of 50,000 Imperial credits for the life of the one that is called Dorold. We demand that you deliver him. Who's Dorold? is what the doctor answered, and he blocked the transmission. Dorold, we lied to you about the hyperdrive. It is finished and it's on board. Now please protect us from these bounty hunters and hyper out after us. Dr. Frontress said. Sure thing, Edgar, answered Dorold. He destroyed bounty hunter after bounty hunter until the modified corvette hypered out. He then pressed the right coordinates and pressed the hyperdrive button. It didn't work. He tried again. Still nothing. Dorold swore repetitively as he shot down another bounty hunter. Those no good scientists tricked him. Now he was stranded and a bunch of bounty hunters knew exactly where he was. Suddenly a very good idea came to him. He would enter the abandoned cruiser's hangar. He did so immediately and he was safe for a little while. Chapter 6, Mission 5, Hyperdrive Luck Dorold was screwed in every way possible. He was in an abandoned cruiser that has no life support and the bounty hunters were shooting at it until it would explode. He looked around the hangar and to his delight, his luck once again provided him an escape method. There in front of him was the most beautiful sight he'd ever seen. It was a Z95. Now a Z95 was much worse off than his TIE fighter, but it did have a standard reliable hyperdrive. If the Z95 that's been there for an indefinite number of time is still good to go, he was saved and could go to the coordinates. He still held the data bed in his pocket with the coordinates written on it faithfully. There was no life support in the hangar, but he had his Imperial pilot suit which he could easily go into space with provided it wasn't too cold. He got out and began floating towards Z-95. He managed to grip himself onto the wing and to climb into the cockpit which pressurized in an instant when he closed the hatch. He was safe and had a hyperdrive at his disposal. He left the hangar at full speed, which wasn't as fast as he'd like, but at least it managed. He programmed a red IFF in it so they would believe he was Imperial, and at least not Rebel. He fought the bounty hunters that came within range, but made his way quickly to the hyperpoint. He flew with haste and made it to the buoy, and put the hyperdrive to the test. There was a slight flutter, a murmur from the engine, and then the stars turned to streaks of light as space morphed into the blue tunnel that is hyperspace. Chapter 7, Mission 6, The Rendezvous Dorold exited hyperspace to find that he was in an empty region of space again. The navigation computer told him he was at the right coordinates, and it was indeed seven days after receiving the databed from Admiral Atheret. Those pirates had obviously told the Emperor's Hammer he was alive, and then they put a bounty on his head. Probably some young overzealous Tycho flag officer looking for a promotion or medal by pleasing the fleet commander with the capture of a known felon. Dorold waited around and noticed a single abandoned ship with one lonely asteroid. At least there was something here. Outside of the ship came an escort shuttle. Hello Dorold, this is Aseret, Admiral Aseret said through the communication system. Hello ma'am, said Dorold. He had gotten used to pirates, scientists and being on the run and almost forgot how to treat an admiral. Well, you're probably wondering why you're here and why I let you escape, lieutenant, said Aseret. Yes, yes ma'am, answered Dorold, a bit insulted at being played with in such a manner. Well, during the trial, I was in the audience when I noticed that you hadn't indeed really meant to kill my agent. I talked to the fleet commander after the trial and asked him 
You let me fake your death so that you could replace my fallen comrade. She paused for a moment. He reluctantly accepted, Dorold, and you get your rank of lieutenant back as one of the agents of the intelligence division. We will only issue you a small reprimand for accidental murder, she then said. That's wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Soon after having uttered those words, came a few things out of hyperspace. A rebel cruiser, a few bounty hunters that had obviously followed him, an escort carrier, and multiple rebel fighters. Well, I'll be off now, lieutenant. Care to cover my departure? Also, report for training at Aurora after this. Try not to let them follow you this time, she said. I'll do my best, ma'am, he answered her. He covered her exit and she left into hyperspace. He then stuck around to destroy quite a few rebels and he hypered out in turn. The abandoned Kara cruiser self-destructed and he was headed to his intelligence division training. Chapter 8 Upon arriving at Aurora, he got a glimpse of the dreadnought Lichter 5 escorted by Praetorian Squadron. He sped to its hangar and inside he met the Admiral again, who awarded him the force of the Emperor's will for doing an excellent job at helping her out. His training began and he was one of the best agents they have ever had.